The medical term for stroke is cerebrovascular accident, or CVA for short. In its most simple definition, it's when a part of the brain does not get enough blood flow, which ultimately leads to cells of the brain, the neurons, to die off unless that blood flow is restored. If the cessation of blood flow is temporary and the brain cells don't die since it was only temporary, that is known as ischemia. So what a lot of people know as a mini stroke is really a transient ischemic attack or TIA, which means that there is a decrease or a cessation of blood flow to a part of the brain, but it is only temporary, not enough to cause damage. If it's severe enough to cause damage to the brain, then it's called infarction. So an infarction to the brain is a stroke. Why would someone have decreased blood flow to this part of the brain or that part of the brain? It all has to do with the blood vessels delivering blood to said area of the brain. Usually there's a blockage of blood flow that causes it. This is the case 80% of the time and it's called an ischemic stroke. The symptoms of a stroke are so variable. It really depends on the type of the stroke, the size of the stroke, and most importantly, the location of the brain that is having the stroke. For example, when someone has an ischemic stroke of the middle cerebral artery, which is the most common artery involved in a stroke, let's say it happens to the middle cerebral artery on the left side of the brain, well, that's gonna cause muscle weakness on the opposite side of the body. In this case, the left arm and the left leg, they become weak and sometimes they're so weak that they're actually paralyzed. And the same goes for the left side of the face, causing facial droop and impaired speech. There's also numbness on the left side of the body. But if someone has, let's say, a hemorrhagic stroke that occurs in the cerebellum, well, they're most likely gonna have headache, nausea, vomiting, and dizziness. So a whole complete set of symptoms that are different from another type of stroke in a different part of the brain. Or maybe someone has a small ischemic stroke in another part of the brain, sometimes the symptoms end up being so mild or even absent if that stroke is very small. So that person might not even know that they had a stroke. So what can you do to prevent a stroke? Well, there's certain risk factors for stroke that you cannot control, like genetics and older age, particularly once you reach the age of 80, that's when the risk of stroke goes up substantially. Then there's a huge risk factor that is in people's control, and that is smoking. Smoking cigarettes increases the risk for all types of stroke. In the Nurses Health Study, smokers had a relative risk of stroke of 2.5 compared with people who never smoked. Looking at people who quit smoking, their risk of stroke it essentially disappeared within a few years after they quit smoking. In fact, in a Swedish cohort study looking at people who had, they had normal blood pressure, but 40% out of the 11,000 people in that study had a stroke as a result of smoking. But what is the biggest risk factor for stroke? Some might say atrial fibrillation, and yes, that's a huge risk factor for stroke for people who have this condition, but I'm talking about the biggest risk factors in general because with atrial fibrillation causing a stroke, that's a whole nother video onto itself. So in general, the biggest modifiable risk factors for stroke are things like hypertension, which is high blood pressure, diabetes, dyslipidemia, also known as abnormal cholesterol levels, and metabolic syndrome. What do all of these things have in common, at least if we're talking about type 2 diabetes and not type 1 diabetes? Well, the common thread is that they're all caused by insulin resistance. So it's fair to say that the biggest modifiable risk factor for stroke is in fact insulin resistance mostly because it's highly processed food that contains way too much added sugar and not enough fiber and over time this causes the pancreas to make more and more insulin and when you do this day in and day out the cells of the body they eventually start to become insulin resistant to all that insulin floating around in the bloodstream now there's other reasons as to why highly processed food does this but this is the most simplistic explanation many people think that excess salt causes high blood pressure and it does but high blood pressure also is a result of insulin resistance. But of course, highly processed food, it also has a lot of salt in it. So the reality is it's both excess sugar and excess salt that's driving that blood pressure up. And yes, the insulin resistance from processed food is what also drives dyslipidemia. That is why you see people have high levels of triglycerides when they have insulin resistance. So the best way to prevent insulin resistance and thus reduce the risk of stroke is really to focus on three things. One is eating mostly unprocessed foods, meaning whole intact foods. So if you're eating fruits, it means eating apples, not apple juice or apple sauce. It means eating vegetables, seeds, nuts, legumes like beans, whole intact grains, so things like quinoa, barley, not foods that are refined carbohydrates, which is basically flour, so pizza um, and just about all types of bread. And also eating uh, seafood or lean poultry is also in general a good idea. 
uh, especially avoiding processed meats that have those nitrates and nitrites. So the processed stuff, especially processed meats, are definitely not a good thing for you. And when you think about it, this is why people who eat a Mediterranean diet end up living longer lives. It's because it's mostly unprocessed food that they're eating. It's also why when you look at the blue zones of the world where people live the longest lives, places like Sardinia, Italy, uh, Greece, Japan, Costa Rica, Loma Linda, California, one of the things that they all have in common is that they're all eating mostly unprocessed food. So the most important way to prevent or even reverse insulin resistance is to focus on eating unprocessed food. Yes, exercise is very important as well, and people should do both. But from a metabolic standpoint, exercise alone does not allow you to completely overcome poor nutrition. It definitely mitigates it, but it's not 100%. Regardless, it's not really a surprise that eating healthy food, exercising, and not smoking are the best things that you can do to prevent insulin resistance and therefore reduce your risk of stroke. And I know I touched on it in this video as to why insulin resistance causes high blood pressure, but if you want to know more about how exactly that happens, then you can check out this video right here.